Thank you. Thank you, Pelle. Uh, yes, I think I think that um, there is a very important school, that is the Malmo School of Design, especially for what regards the participation and co-design. And I is not to please them and all the school in general that I say that I've learned a lot. So I, I did, I'm quite old now, so I did a lot of things in my life. But to do a lot of things as a designer, you have to be capable to steal from many different places. And uh, to steal and re-elaborate, and sometimes maybe even not to be totally in agreement, but you have to know where to go to steal. And uh, I know that everything that came from here was very worth to steal something, to take something. So it's been, for me, it's been really very important. And uh, I repeat, I don't telling it for please uh, them and all the audience here, but because I'm really convinced that, and uh, in the discussion and maybe also in my presentation, you will see it. I, I can also add that, um, well, I am also happy to be here because it's a beautiful place, it's a beautiful time, it's a beautiful weather, so you're beautiful people, so we are all happy. We are not so much happy, I have to be sincere. In any case, uh, I, I, I want to, to, to say that uh, I am working a lot to present this book. And uh, I, I don't know if commercially <laughs> if it's good or not. Maybe it do not change so much in selling. But uh, if you have a book that uh, in some way summarizes what you have done or what you think very modestly to have learned, in, in my case, 10 years, the last 10 years of my experience, the book become a reason to go around and to try to tell this story. So I took the book very seriously by this point of view, and I have already done maybe 20 different uh, presentations, maybe more. The good thing is that uh, I don't get bored <laughs> because uh, things change so fast that uh, practically every presentation is different from the previous one. Or at least the, the, the tone, the rhetoric, there is a lot of things that are different from the other ones. And um, yes, so here I am with you now. And uh, it could appear rhetoric to start from here. But it's very difficult for me, and I think, I'm sure, also for you, not to start considering something that is uh, so dramatic as to what we see, for instance, in these pictures. The problem is that seeing so many pictures about uh, this uh, drama, we can get accustomed. And uh, the, the worst picture that I've seen, the one that has been the most terrible for me, is this one. Have you seen it? You know what there is in the van? 74 dead people. And uh, it's so terrible because it's so normal. <laughs> because the car continues to go, and there are some very technical people dressed in white that very uh, hygienically try to understand how they have to deal with these 74 bodies inside a van of a chicken wurstel. And it came in my mind, this book, that has this one I'm sure that you know, of Anna Harent, that is the banality of the evil. So how things can become evil and uh, also normal in some way. And uh, I will not exaggerate, but I think that the risk is to repeat something that already happened in, this, in the history. So this is, <laughs> for me, a necessity to start from here, because I could not say my story are in general more positive and I cannot start to tell positive stories without considering where we are in this moment. But in the same way that looking at this picture and the banality of the evil, it happened to me to see another picture, that is this one. And the lady says, it was natural to do so. So it's natural that if you find people that are in such a condition, you open your home, home and you say, welcome. It's natural. So in the same way that there is the banality of the evil, there is also the simplicity of the good. 
and the simplicity of the good, in this case, luckily, I will not now say in general, what is in general Europe, but in particular, and this will be one of my key words, so we have never to generalize. We have always, if we want to do something, we have to look in the particular, because in the particular we can find the good case, the good example, the place where we can start from. So the good idea in this simplicity spread, and spread in the, uh, well, I, I only pick up a few ideas. So many people started to do something that was normal uh, to be done. And afterwards, some organizations started to happen. And afterward, uh, more complex organization to face the, what was the events. And in some way, this is social innovation. So the core of what I want to say for what regards social innovation is already here. There has been, a, before the state, before uh, the, 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 go the German government or, the, I don't know, the Swedish one said something, somebody started to do something. And it was not only, uh, please, come, this is my home. But it was also to organize, to make something more organized, not only emotional, but also organization. And uh, there start to be several cases that are very good cases of social innovation. Now, I have not, unfortunately, uh, I have not uh, until now a real research on that. So I simply put together some information that I gather from the network or for the newspaper, but we start to see interesting way, for instance, this one, sorry, this is already Italian because that was the easiest one for me. It's uh, to put together students and uh, refugees with a double a kind of symbiosis in between students and uh, for the home and refugees. Or this one is uh, a kind of a collaboration between uh, refugees and uh, some cities where they have to manage some park and so they are involved in the managing of the park. Or this one that is in Italy is fantastic. It's, uh, um, there are a lot of very small villages that are practically abandoned and the, the, the mayor of this uh, very small commune uh, asked to the, the, these people to come to revitalize. So it's so, in some way, emblematic. This idea of a very old country with very old people, with em practically empty village, and this new that arrived. Of course, this is not the solution for the long time. Because, but in some way, tell us a story that is really very interesting. And uh, all these ones, the last one that I say that is not only this is my home, come, but it's the beginning of organizing something, they have been designed. So they are organizations that have been designed. So all those people, the one that organized how to have the immigrant in, uh, in the villages or to make the work for the gardeners or the one that with the students, are designers. So they design, let's say. They are not designers, but they use, as I will say better in the while, the human capability of design. So if we see that there are people that are using this capability of design to make something so interesting, of course, we can ask ourselves what uh, the design of the design expert, that probably me, you, can do. So what can we do in relation to something that is already happening? And if you want, this is the question to which also my book in a very modest way, but try to give some answers. So if something is happening and everybody has to use this capability to design, what those that are the designer or the expert designer, the design expert should do? In my view, I can anticipate there is a lot that we can do. So on the contrary of what appeared some years ago when we started to talk, everybody designers, so what the designer do? Maybe they have to disappear, no. If so many people has to behave in a designerly way, there is more and more opportunity for expert designer to have something to do, to help all this design process. 
the problem, and I'm practically telling all the story, I could finish here, uh, is that uh, we, the designer, the design expert, have to develop the specific capability to permit us to present ourselves in this new arena, saying, hey, we are here, we have some, something to give you, some way to enter in the process. And the others have to recognize that the designer have this kind of capabilities. So at the moment, both are not telling the story. So the designer are very difficult difficulty to say we are the one that can help this process, and the other one obviously do not have any cue <laughs> that the designer could help this kind of process. So there is a lot to be done. So I want to talk uh, now is already 10 minutes. I want to talk for 20 minutes. So when it's 20 minutes, please throw me something. I will stop because I will give the opportunity to discuss. And in any case, I have already anticipated the story is this one. Now I can go a little bit more in, the, in deep, but this is the story. And you can read the book, of course. <laughs> so you have everything. So to, to, to make these uh, presentations, I prepared uh, a kind of a concept map that is uh, a navigation tool. And uh, of course, I am not going to introduce every one of the words that are there. It's only these are the words that in some way compose my book. And uh, it's important because I can make a presentation passing through and uh, without talking about everything, but at least giving you the idea that, uh, as everybody knows, reality is very complex. So, of course, everything that I do, and probably we do, and the motivation of the book, is that we have a crisis, a multiple crisis, that become more and more evident. But in the book, I don't talk so much about that. So it's the background. And clearly, we all hope to move toward a sustainable society. And uh, this is the motivation of the book. But I don't talk so much about the sustainable society per se. Yeah, already many people are talking about this. There is a lot to, to be said. But this is not the core of the book. The core of the book is on uh, social innovation and design and the hypothesis that we can use a strategy towards sustainability that is based on social innovation. That is not the only way to go towards sustainability, but it's a strategy, one of the possible way, and in my view, is a very promising one. And so I want now to present shortly the design and the social innovation. I have to present the design, and it's very probable that uh, my 20 minutes could finish also only in presenting this point, because uh, it's very controversial, or more than controversial, it's a, in my view a little bit messy. And also before uh, Pele was saying, maybe we are not so in agreement about uh, design, expert design, so I think that it's really necessary <coughs> to, to spend some words on that to clarify our position, and afterward, the discussion can happen. So the, the first, I called it emerging design for reason that you will say, and the, the beginning of the design of the 20th century, and I hope that it will be clear in the while. But let's start from phenomenology. If you go to a bookshop at the point where there is design, you can find out this kind of variety. So you find a design linked to policy, public sector innovation, business, social impact, service design, design for change, design for policy, and so on and so forth. What does it mean? It means that if you look for design today, you do not find so many industrial design. Maybe that you find some industrial design, but once design was industrial design, or graphic design, or very specific kind of design. Now we have the impression, before any theory, but with this uh, tangible experience that you can do, that we are using, we, we as a, the design community is using design for everything. And this is not my opinion. These are books that you can find around. 
And uh, I call it emerging design because I have the impression that uh, even if there is this variety of a way of talking about design, uh, it's not yet changed the frame in which people, included the school of design, talk about design. And I have the impression that we all talk about design as it was the design of the last century. They're still alive, but in my view, it's already over. So what is the big change that happened? Is that we made a discovery that design is not linked to industry. Design is linked to a change in the environment in which you cannot use another human capability that is to replicate. So if nothing happened, you use your capability to do as it has always been done, that I call the conventional mode. So you do things following conventions. And it's very economic in terms of energy. And normally, it, if nothing changes, it's very effective because the convention is a result of uh, centuries of experience. So it has been proved. When you cannot use this conventional design, when the context change, and so if you try to do something as it has always been done, it do not work. And therefore, you have to do something else. And uh, the beginning of the story of design is at the beginning of the last century because uh, the core of the transformation in the everyday life of people has been the penetration of the industry of the beginning of the last century into the society. And so there was a desperate need to redesign everything, so to, to change everything, and therefore, given that it could not be reproduced as it was before, uh, to design it. And so we arrived to the idea that design was linked to the industry more than that, was linked to the mass production, because that industry in that moment was the mass production. And so we said design is uh, linked to the industrial society and to objects that have to be reproduced. But afterward, it happened that the <coughs> tendency to transform moved from uh, this core in the industry toward the same industry changes, and they are not so much uh, mass production, and afterward, the services changed, and afterward, the organization changed, and uh, the daily life of people changed. And therefore, less and less moment, we can use conventions more and more moment, we have to use uh, our design capability. And the our, or the we, could be individual, me, you, each one of you, but organization, the company, of course, but also the city. Now, every city is talking about design, designing yourself, designing your services, designing your activity, the regions. So practically every entity that presents itself as an entity, a collective individual has to design. Again, because things are changing so fast that if you ask yourself, I am a city, what I want to do, you cannot say, okay, I am a city, I am a city. <laughs> there is nothing to say, as it was in the past. Now you have to decide how you want to be a city with, with character, with, with identity, etc., etc. So this is the story. And uh, what does it mean that design is a capability that is uh, related uh, to every possible problem when uh, you cannot separate the cultural from the technical issue. So not, all, in my view, in my interpretation, not all the problems. Somebody says the wiki problems, the problems that are complex, but at the end of the day, the complexity is given when it's not only a technological issue, because if it is only a technological issue, it's good for the engineers. If it is only a social cultural issue, probably it's for some human science. If it is a mixture in which you cannot separate something that is practical from something that is uh, cultural, social, etc., 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 at every scale, you have to use uh, what is designed. That is a very uh, a set of competencies or capabilities that permit to navigate this complexity. Doing what? We will see in a while. In any case, the new definition of design that is emerging, and this is not only me, there are many other people, maybe with different words, but they are saying the same thing, is that uh, it's an activity 
that can be applied practically to everything, when the everything is a mixture of technical and cultural issue. And uh, an important thing to be said now, not to be misunderstood, maybe it's obvious, that this emerging design is not designed for sustainability. So you can use this emerging design for the good and for the bad, as the design of the 20th century has been used for the good and for the bad, most for the bad and for the you. And if we don't do anything, probably also this new design, could, this new way can be used. All the discussion about the design thinking, the most of the case is used to do something that for sure is not bringing us towards sustainability. But I think that if we don't understand deeply the change in design, we cannot do design for sustainability in the 21st century. Therefore, even if uh, design, the new design that is emerging do not give any guarantee, but it's the precondition to understand that as designer we can play a role in the transition towards sustainability. And not only the limited role of the redesigning a product that is a little bit more environmentally good, but a role in a society, in a different organization of the society that are to change in a direction that is disruptive in relation to the mainstream. This is why I, I'm using my time to try to share with you these ideas of design, because afterward, when this is clear, I think that this audience has a certain perception of what is a social innovation for sustainability, why it could be interesting, you have it, and also I told it in my very short introduction. But it's very important to understand what is design in this story, if we are in an audience of design. It's not that design is so important by definition. But So the second point about uh, design in general, but we will see the implication in design for social, you know, in uh, this emerging design, is that the messiness in the discussion about design is, uh, in my view, given that there are at least three different ways in which we can correctly talk, use the term design, but they have different meaning. And uh, in my view, is really very important to try to clarify. I don't know if I am capable to clarify. I don't know if my one will be a clarification that is acceptable for you, but I make my little attempt. So the starting point, as I anticipate, is design capabilities is a human capability. As if we talk about creativity and we say everybody could be creative, especially when they're young and maybe after they lose it, but everybody is creative, nobody uh, as anything to say. But the fact that we are all creative, we, we all have a certain creativity, do not mean that we are all artists. Afterward, you are the artist. So, uh, the human capability of design, in my view, is a combination of a critical sense that everybody has. So you have to look to the reality and recognize that you don't like it, something you don't like it. The creativity, that look into the reality that you don't like, you have to, to be capable to imagine something that instead you could like. And finally, and this in my view is the specificity of design, what you dream or what you imagine has to be viable in a certain conditions. And this in some way change the position in between what could be a more artistic attitude toward a more design attitude. So, the artist can play with the culture and have an impact, proposing whatever have an impact. They are not asked to make something that is viable. Uh, the designer, if you dream something as a designer, you have to show that at least in some condition it could be done, in my view. So, all the three, uh, critical sense, creativity and practical sense, are human capabilities that mix it together, generate what they call the diffuse design. All the discussion about design thinking is talking about diffuse design. All the, the, the rhetoric about the diffusion of the design thinking is some company, for instance, IDO, that uh, pretend to say, I go in the different places and I help people to be a manager and a technologist, a sociologist, but with more capability to design. So all the discussion about design thinking is not for expert designers, <laughs> or better. We, as expert design, have mandatory to have a design thinking, but when we promote the design thinking, we promote the design thinking in other people, 
that are not expert design are whatever kind of people. And uh, in <laughs> the all of the expert design, you have the one uh, sorry, of the diffuse design, you are the one that are the expert design. Who are they? Are they one that have studied, make some experience, have uh, in my metaphor a toolkit, and uh, is they are capable to show what they are able to do. And the toolkit is not enough, uh, they need also to have a culture that is the weakest part, as we will see in a while, of the story. Therefore, we all design, but uh, somebody is supposed to have some special capability because a study has done some experience. And so when we are in the co-design process, so people together designing and making things happen, uh, we should bring our contribution in terms of uh, practicalities, the tools that we can introduce, and the culture that can enrich the conversation with images or with uh, ideas or with suggestions, with metaphor, with stories at the end of the day. And after, so when we talk about expert design, we talk about the discipline. This is very unpopular <laughs> normally. I am strongly convinced that we have to be highly disciplinary. So if you want to have what is the third, that is the co-design, sorry, the co-design process, it means that uh, around an ideal table, you have different actors with different backgrounds, and all them design. And if you are the design expert, you have to bring something to the discussion. And so the, the issue for me that I am a, a professor or I work in the university to somebody that uh, pretend in the future correctly to be expert designer and to be recognized for that, I have to give them a clear idea of what is the specificity of the tools and the culture that they are bringing in the co-design arena. I mean, if you are around this table and the, all we design and the engineer says, I am capable to make things work, and the, tech, the information technology, I am capable to make a software, and the marketers say, I'm capable to make a marketing, and the managers say, I'm capable to make a business plan, and they whoop, arrive to me that I'm a designer, <laughs> and I have to, something to say. And could not be, I am the one that coordinate everything. Because to coordinate everything, you have to be capable to do it. And it's not say that the other accepted. So you have to have some specific knowledge that is both there and with the other, you create a process that is a co-design process. For me, the confusion ha happened because in the past, the process of design and the work of the designer was coincident. So if we talk about designer, we were talking about the process of design. Now, the process of design happened in the networks. It's a co-action with many people participating. And uh, the expert design have to present themselves with some capabilities. I think that we should have capabilities and we should be recognized. But it's not so obvious. Therefore, when you talk about co-design, for me, you talk about the process, not about a specific person. And I will say, by definition, because if the co-design is a conversation, everybody has to have its own position, its own idea, have something to say. If you don't have anything to say, you are not part of a conversation. So you have to have something original to say. And if the designer has to be part of this uh, discussion, they have to develop their own specific capability. In between them is to talk with the other, of course. But bringing what? The final point, that, and is one of the weakest, is that um, when we talk, I think that everybody agrees that design is problem solving. And I think that everybody agrees that design is not only problem solving, it's also sense making. So we play with something that uh, have a meaning into the reality. So every change, every intervention that we do in the reality changes a sense, a system of meaning. And uh, it happened, in my view, that all the design actions are always both 
problem solving and sense making, but there is a kind of pendulum. And in the history of design, you have had some moment in which uh, talking about design was quasi obvious. We were talking about uh, sense making. For instance, I am Italian. I was already designer in the 80s. For who is old enough to remember, all the discussion about design in the 80s was about uh, the language, the form, the shape, the meaning that was not so superficial because uh, we, or my colleague, pretended to do the revolution doing what we did, but was mainly on the dimension of the meaning. And I will dare to say that also the origin, the Bauhaus, it was more problem solving or sense making. It's a rhetoric demand. They have not invented anything. Any, everything was already being invented by the engineers. But the Bauhaus generated an old vision of the modernity and created a system of values about uh, the democracy of consumption. So they create values and formal languages. And they change the history of the industry and the society, therefore for the good and for the bad. Because afterward, many of the dreams that they proposed both us in a direction that now we recognize is a disaster. But this is to say that uh, it's not that the problem solving is important and the other one, okay, you make it pretty. No, at the end of the day, things have to work. But what makes people move is the meaning. And therefore, the meaning and the included that very strange thing that is the beauty that I put in the same box with the meaning uh, are very powerful driver of change. So we cannot pretend to move, I think, uh, sorry, <laughs> sometimes I'm too much. <laughs> I have to be more modest when I talk. But uh, I think that we cannot really move toward a new civilization if we are not capable to understand that the civilization are based mainly on systems of meanings. Frame, somebody was saying yesterday, way of building the world. That is all cultural issue. Therefore, what happened is that if it is true that for whatever kind of design we have the both, if we go to the emerging design, the problem solving normally is talked as uh, finding solutions, and uh, the sense making is so, okay, making meaning. But what happened is that after having talked about sense making so much with the Italians and others for many, many years, when that kind of design started to be obsolete and the new emerging design started, it has been dominated by the Anglo-Saxon attitude, and all the discussion has been on, so on problem solving. Practically, when we discuss about the service strategy system, blah, 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 we talk about how to solve the problems. And there are companies that present themselves, we are the problem solver. Therefore, it happened that until now, all the discussion on the emerging design has been on solutions, on problem solving. At the same time, because you cannot escape to generate a culture, because you cannot separate the two, if you don't talk about the culture, some kind of poor culture emerge, and the poor culture that emerge, I call it solutionism. That is a kind of ideology that says everything in the world can be transformed in problem, and every problem can be solved. And if we solve each one of these problems, we find out the solution. And the, the quality of the story, the quality of what we propose, is the quality of this solution. And uh, for who is more designer and older, it's a little bit as, at a certain point of modernity, we had the functionalism. So the solutionism stayed to the new design as the functionalism stayed to the old design that reduced the meaning of the object only to the functions. The functions are important, but everybody knows that, design, that the products are much more than a function. And so the new organization in which, on which we are working are very important that they work, but they are much more than that. And therefore, the issue that is very open to everybody 
included me that I'm talking now, is, okay, there is a lot to do on the side of the problem solving, but there is much more to do on the side of the sense making. And this is uh, a limit of all the emerging design that, as I said before, is not necessarily designed for sustainability. But if we go to the design for sustainability, it's dramatic. Because uh, if I have time, uh, we can see now the story about uh, social innovation. And the social innovation has proposed a hundred of new ideas. There are so many solutions. There are a lot of ready solutions that are there. And we discuss for who is dealing with social innovation. We know that the discussion is dominated by the managerial language. I am not against the managers. They help to make things work. But we cannot, as designers, flat ourselves in talking as a manager, as we cannot talk as about a sociologue or whatever. We have, should have our discussion and our specific culture. And uh, the issue is what is and how you create the specific culture that could be adapt to talk about the soft qualities and uh, the aesthetics and the end of the story, even the beauty of the new artifacts on which we are dealing with. I. Well, <clears throat> I, I'm already over my time, so I show you only one thing. Uh, th this was the discussion on design. As I told you, I, I do it a little bit long because I think that if, if we have shared at least the language, afterward it's easier to discuss about design for social innovation, where if we have a confusion about uh, or misunderstanding about what we intend for design, it's very difficult. In any case, for the social innovation, for me, social innovation also is not only for sustainability. You can have social innovation that goes in totally different direction. So when I say social innovation, it's implicit social innovation for sustainability. There are different kinds of social innovation at different levels. But uh, the ones that are <laughs> being more promising for me are what are the local discontinuities. So when somebody starts, as in the few examples that I give you at the beginning with the migrants, somebody starts to do something that is not obvious in the mainstream of thinking. So they are local because normally are people doing something locally and are discontinuity because they break what has been the normal way of thinking of the thought. And they could be very small but they are small, but they are not re reformista. They are not uh, improving the system. They are introducing in the system some element that breaks the system. So the fact to be small do not mean that they are small in a bigger system they are still alive. They, they do not mean that they are imp simply improving the system. They are introducing in the system some element that, in my view, at a certain point, can uh, change, and you can have the change of the overall system. So in any case, here I tell the story that there are a lot of this social innovation around, and uh, the common denominator of this social innovation is uh, something related to collaboration. So the break is that uh, the stereotype is the, the new solution to be acceptable are to go in the direction that has been the mainstream, still is the mainstream of hyper more and more individualistic attitude. And this one are people that discover that it's possible to collaborate in living, in working, in services, in food, and as I saw, also kind of collaborative welcoming. And uh, the collaboration make people stronger, and it's beautiful, so people like it. It's not only that it's convenient, but it's also something that they like. And there have been hundreds of thousands, no, sorry, <laughs> hundreds of thousands is too much, hundreds of thousands of people, but hundreds of ideas that circulate in the world in which some new way of doing things happen. And um, they are good because they solve problems. Sometimes they solve problems that would be impossible to solve in another way. Um, 
but uh, the point that makes them so interesting for me and probably for many of you is then when you solve one problem, you create a kind of very valuable byproduct that is create some social value, some relational good around it. So this is the characteristic that makes them so interesting and original. On one side, you solve a problem, some of them very difficult, but you do it in a way that generates sociability. So for instance, yesterday in the discussion that we had, it's not only the what you do, it's also the how you do it. And the how you do it is what could or not create this uh, sub-product, by-product so interesting that is uh, reinforcing the social networks. And for this reason, for me, they give ideas that anticipate in some way what could be um, a sustainable society. The social innovation, as all the innovation, have an inventor, so they start from invention, in this case, social inventions. Normally, we call them the heroes that start to do something that nobody did before. Afterward, they can consolidate, and afterward, they can really consolidate and become the new way of doing things. So this is uh, here, uh, more or less, I want to finish, because until now, many people, including my group and the people with whom I work, have been very uh, observing mainly the beginning of the story, when things start. And we was very happy to see this community, people that was so nice, they do everything so well, they are so social, they like so many things, they are so clearly in the direction that we like. But when it moves and consolidates, it changes. And we have to be capable to recognize not only the original, the initial phase of social innovation, but also how this social innovation evolve. Because at the origin, they, it's very easy to see why they are so interesting. But when they evolve, it can become very difficult. And in my view, and uh, probably this we go toward the end, the responsibility of the design expert increase. Because at the beginning, in some way, you have this nice group. You can, as a designer, hide behind and say, oh, they are already doing so well. I help them, and we are in the right direction. But when these ideas start to consolidate and spread, the community is not so clear as it was at the beginning. You, as a designer, are more alone, and you have to take some decision. And uh, the decision can go in different direction, and I close with this example. It's a very, the most banal example that I can do, but simply because uh, it do not ask for so many words, and uh, you can understand, and we can start a discussion if you want. It's about carpooling. The fact that carpooling is good environmentally is clear. You put more people in the same car, so you use better the asset. At the beginning, there was very interesting, creative community putting together and happily going and making things. So we could have a design with community. So you could be a designer and work with the community to see how you can help them. Afterward, the, the city very often, some of them at least, recognized the carpooling was good. So they started to create some rules. And you can have, as a designer, a design for the community. So you work with, the, in this case, the local authorities to create an environment that by the point of view of the law is better. And in this case, already you start not to be so linked to the community, so you have to have your own ideas, your design guideline, what you want to do. At the beginning, the social innovation is done with the technology that already exists, so recombining what is there. But if an idea proved to be a good idea starts to spread, you start to have dedicated technologies. And therefore, you start to have also very normal service design. Very normal at this point. So there is uh, to solve some problem, and you can divide, uh, develop some system that permits you to do it. And afterwards, somebody can recognize that you can make some money, or in any case, you can create some business model on it. And therefore, you have to see how this business model can be done. And in terms of design, this is strategic design. The strategic design means to see how different partners can go together, et cetera, et cetera. 
the issue, maybe you have understood where I'm going, that in this transformation, you can start for this very nice community, and you end up, as in this case, in a monster. At least, for me, it's a monster. And uh, something happened in the trajectory. And uh, what happened in the trajectory is related to many things, not only related to the environment, but for sure there is also a design component. And uh, as probably you know, the, the notion, so we use normally Uber because it's the most well known, but uh, it's a kind of transformation that is happening in many different sectors that take the name of Uberization. And uh, so there is a debate about Uberization because it's very dangerous. If we want, if you don't know, we can explain better why. In any case, there is a debate. But the debate at the moment is not the debate done by designers. It's a debate done mainly, for what I know, by people involved in the economy of work. Because the main, the most evident problem of Uber is that creates platform where people is totally alone and fragile in relation to the condition of work. But maybe we, have, we should have something to do, because Uber is very well designed. So it's a very good example that the emerging design could be used also in a negative way, because it's really, they have a lot of money and practically they are only designing. They are not to do anything else than to design a beautiful, very functioning platform. So I think that we have to be aware of this. We are aware that dealing with design for social innovation is not only working with the nice communities, but is to be capable to enter in the system in which some decision has to be taken with the state, with the cities, with the companies, and uh, we have to develop guidelines that are not only technical, but has to be, if in the, the, uh, evolve, in the evolution from the original community of the carpooling toward Uber, somebody said, Manzini, hey, it's obvious, uh, when things are at the beginning, are very nice, and afterward, this is a market. Welcome in the real society. But I think that is not a natural law. I think that uh, there could be a moment, a way in which you can have different directions. And we have to develop capabilities to play very modestly, because of course there are all other actors, and maybe they are also stronger than us, the possibility to enter in this evolution and bring the story in the way that uh, we dare to say is better. And here we are, and this is also this level of my discussion at the moment, and I leave uh, to Pell if you want to start a conversation. Thank you. The first one, yeah. The, the 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 map, you mean? No, not the map. Uh, yeah, Europe. Yes. Good. This Thank one. Um, um, we'll open this up for discussion of whatever you want to uh, to uh, discuss with that see from what is presented, uh, but. Uh, Having the first one to hold the mic microphone, I take the opportunity to dig into uh, a question that we have uh, been discussing during uh, the last days. And then you can decide whether you want to join in that discussion or bring up another thread. Uh, so uh, I thought it was very proper uh, that you started with, uh, with this picture. and. Uh, I think it was uh, you, you put very well your view on on expert design, which I would uh, I don't think we disagree actually on that on, on that that there's if if designers should participate in co-design processes, uh, uh, there has to be 
some specific competence that you uh, participate with. And uh, I think more generally, uh, what, what we teach at design schools, I think, is, is, is in, a, in a way very, very simple. It's, uh, it's the idea of, of living with complexity, of, uh, of being able to have a lot of different uh, possibilities, uh, trajectories, open without closing to a solution uh, too early. And I think that fits quite well with, with your notion of expert design. So it, doesn't, it, it could have to do with technology, but it could have to do with something completely different. But basically, that's uh, uh, at least that's one view of what you use five, six years of, of, of getting better at. Yeah. So if we're talking about design for social innovation, uh, it's, uh, it's maybe these kinds of complexities uh, uh, that, that one has to deal with. And uh, so I guess my question, uh, I, I should also maybe as a background say that uh, it seems obvious like if that uh, designers and design researchers just as any any citizen or any professional group are thinking about how can we how can we engage in what's happening here 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 and now uh, so uh, I guess my opening question uh, to, to you or, or which is maybe just as much uh, to the audience uh, is what what do you think designers can contribute with in a situation uh, like this and uh, and to uh, to underline the, the, the dilemma in a way, I think one can uh, also uh, take into account uh, what you finished your talk with, uh, with the Iberization, uh, the, where you talked about that things that look so good in the beginning, the kind of interventions that one starts to do, can end up in so many different uh, directions. So, the thing first is, uh, no, I don't, I know that there's not a single simple answer to it, but <laughs> is there, what can uh, design designers, design research do in, in this situation? And how can one avoid that what one does is not an hybridization, but in a, in a completely different context? Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, um, I open it because I can, uh, maybe use my my next slides two or three slides but the answer is i think that uh, slowly we are learning how to navigate in complexity and uh, to navigate in complexity means not to be overwhelmed by complexity and this means also not to be overwhelmed by the dimension of the problems and therefore for instance i think that there is no recipe to avoid for instance, the risk of moving from something nice and to arrive to something that is evil. So th there is no one answer. So there is. I think that are some design guidelines that we should uh, not only individually but as a community share. And uh, as it happened also at the beginning of the last century, so all the community of the architects and the designer at a certain point, they shared in many different ways with different ideas. It was not banal, but there was some spirit of the time that oriented many people in move in the direction that at that time was called the modernity and uh, distribution, transparent distribution of products and so on. So we have to generate it and after that this is a common work, and afterward, each one of us can intervene depending in which position is in the system. You cannot imagine to be frustrated because you cannot change everything. You can change what you can change. <laughs> that is what's around you. And you have only to hope that many other people will do some choices in different positions that have some component in the same direction and all together create the new. But uh, uh, you have not to overcharge yourself because this is paralyzing. So for you and me, we are old, we can take what we want, but imagine a young student. So you have not to say you have to solve the problem. 
we have to say we have a critical sense, we have some tools, we have some culture, and we do what we can in the really in the situation in which we are. And uh, when I talk, uh, one of the points of design for social innovation that I like to say is that there is no one way of doing it. So, for instance, somebody talk about design activism, somebody talk about design with community, as uh, you do here very well. But there is also design for the communities, and there is also the design to generate new culture. And all this is designed for social innovation. And if I will say all this is design, if I need to add uh, social innovation, it's simply because it's still relatively new, the fact that we can intervene on the social change. So we have to tell it to make it clear. But at the end, it's simply to use the design tools to upgrade it to the new conditions and to have a culture that permit us to make the choice that case by case, when is possible, permit us to bring a little bit the system, not the system, but the subsystem of the new idea that are emerging to reinforce, to be stronger, and uh, hopefully when there will be the moment to become the new mainstream. Was it an answer? Yeah, sure. In and uh, is there anyone else that would like to uh, join the conversation on this issue. You? Okay, good. Hi, uh, I'm David. I'm just a bit curious. Um, you say that, this, that, that, uh, that a specific design contribution is about to navigate complexity. Not on... No. Not only, no. This is for everybody. <laughs> this is for, yes, yes. Because I'm thinking, how do you look, how do you see, d d how do you see design in relation to other movements? Uh, because many movements are finding ways of dealing with complex social problems. You know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. the people working with organizational development, it's social movements. We have so much in common uh, working. What is the specific, specific design contribution I, 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 yeah. Indifference from those who work with co-creation and you yeah, know, yeah. Um, well, collaboration uh, skills. What is the design yeah. specific contribution? Um, when I said that we have to design in uh, the complexity, uh, it was uh, for everybody. So it was referred to the diffuse design. So everybody has to be able to navigate in the complexity. And uh, maybe the one that has more difficulties are the, de the professional designer or the engineer, because we have been accustomed that we uh, could simplify the world and uh, to find a rational uh, direction, or in any case, to project something. But the daily life of people is always managing complexity. So the daily life of people is, by definition, in complexity, even when the story was a story of the modern, clear future, et cetera, et cetera. In the reality, it was an ideology because the real life of people was always navigating in the complexity. The only difference is that at that time, there was many stable conve conventions. So if you had to get married, you, you knew in advance what does it mean to marry, where today you can choose what is the sex of your partner, you have to choose how to do it, you have to choose a lot of things. So you have to design your marriage in the same way, okay, you have to design something, many other things. So this is uh, the point. And the, the fact that we have something similar to other movement, okay, oh, everybody that is working on social change are working on social change. And everyone are designing. If you want, I, I can make an example, that as every example could be a little bit risky, to be misunderstood, but I, I, maybe I do it. You know the transition town movement? Yes. The transition town movement starts from the assumption that uh, there will be a crisis, and therefore we have to prepare ourselves. In my view, this is a way of telling a story. Okay, it's a way of telling a story. Do you know slow, the slow movement, slow food movement? Many of you maybe know it. What is the starting point of the low food movement? Is the right to pleasure. And uh, these two movements have a very different design approach. Because the story of the one is, my God, there is a disaster coming, so we have to prepare ourselves. So it's a story about uh, reacting to a problem, uh, defending yourself. The other one is, they know that there will be problems, but they say, we, need, we have a right to eat 
to eat something that is good and tasty. And to be good and tasty, it has to be local and seasonal. And therefore, at the end, they propose the local and seasonal, but the story is a positive story. And in my view, slow food is a kind of design expert, de facto. Maybe they are not, at the beginning, really design experts, but they act as design experts. So they find the communication, they find a way to present the story in a positive way. Transition town are engineers. Maybe they are not engineers, but they are not, uh, they are solutionists. So there is a problem, we have to solve the problem. There is no vision of a, what new civilization could start if you simply say there could be a disaster, we have to protect ourselves. A new middle age, age maybe, or, or worse. Anyone that wants to come in and comment at this moment? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, please. Well, um, thank you for bringing up these uh, dilemmas and paradoxes in the design uh, concept. And, um, yeah, I think in the previous question also, uh, yeah, perhaps uh, between the lines, there is this... Uh, issue of, of um, um, the privilege of interpret interpretation is uh, is the design uh, community better uh, prepared to interpret the present situation that we're now experiencing um, and in case it is better prepared than other um, fields of ex expertise uh, why and how I think this is uh, a very important question that you brought up. And, and I think also, historically, there are some um, hidden um, points of departure in the design concept. We, as, as you also um, very well um, pointed out, we tend to think about design as um, the process, a process that everyone can take uh, part in and engage in, uh, in order to change existing situations into preferred ones. It is a kind of problem solving, uh, you said. At the same time, uh, we tend to, th we have recently um, re-conceptualized um, design um, very much against an idea of problem solving. Design is something different than problem solving. It's supposed to be um, more of a dynamic play, more of, a, more of an opening up of, of many possibilities, m rather problematizing or increasing the number of potentials than solving problems. So there are lots of, of these, um, yeah, co co contradictions, uh, embedded in the design concept. And I think one reason for that is that we never really discuss the ethical um, points of departure. Uh, we tend to take something for given when it comes to uh, ethics, uh, also embedded in, in the very famous uh, definition as it was formulated by Herbert Simon this changing of existing situation into preferred ones, because what is the preferred? I mean, we never really d discuss the point, the very basic points of departure. There is something that is always taken for given in the design concept. Uh, and I also think that has to do with the very fact that design as a practice is a, a historical result of a function separation, not at all what you optimistically refer to as a practice that appears when we cannot separate the practical, that is the material and technical or industrial, from the cultural, which is the social. I think it's the opposite. Design is something that the Western society now um, uh, believes in as a solution once it has outsourced everything that is material, technical, mm -hmm. industrial. That, that is something that we can kind of build our future on. But if we really want to engage in the combination of the cultural and practical, uh, uh, the cultural and practical, yeah, well, that is a design uh, challenge, and it's not only for designers, I would say. And it, this is a comment, <laughs> not a question. 
Good. Sorry. Maybe could could we have some other questions? So because I tend to talk so much. So if if I answer to every question in the same way. Uh, hello, I am Diana. Uh, so earlier you were talking about design in social innovation and you refer to the heroes and their initiatives and the ones that form the creative communities and how their initiatives uh, uh, and the spirit that they have at the beginning later on turns into uberization, as you called it. But then I remember in your book on col uh, collaborative services, you gave actually some guidelines for design to avoid that to happen. And uh, they were focused on accessibility and on quality instead of just scaling up. And my question is, in, um, if the, that you know of any initiatives that were done uh, that actually followed those guidelines, in, in which instead of just scaling up, they're focusing on accessibility and on quality? Yeah. And if you can tell us about them. No, maybe we can have a third one afterward, I answer to the three. Hi, uh, my name is Michelle. I was wondering in the title of your uh, talk, uh, it's like when everybody designs. I was Where are you? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what you mean, who do you mean with everybody? Like later you talk about uh, code design as a process in which different actors are involved. And as Latour talked about like human and non-human actors, I was wondering how you, because if we talk about sustainability, there's also a lot of non-human actors involved in this, like things we share the planet with. Um, and I was wondering how you imagine non-human actors to be part of that design process, or if you imagine that. Oh. Uh, I, I think you have enough now for... Yeah. <laughs> eh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, I will go f from the last one to, to the first one. Um, but uh, you're right. I, I was only talking about the interaction between women, um, also women and men, uh, between people. Uh, I, I should enrich the way in which I present, including also... Uh, m more clearly things and uh, things uh, product uh, places animals and um, yes uh, I, maybe they are better than me because all the story about the thing as an assembly of uh, human and non human has been much more developed so what they can say on answering to your topic i've learned from them so you can ask them they are much better than me i agree with them so if they say something meaningful uh, it's uh, good also for me uh, sorry is, uh, i will not uh, not take seriously your question it's really that i cannot say much more than what i'm saying now at the moment and uh, the the um, The, 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 the first, the, the one that was previous, is this one, if there are good examples. So, first of all, I am so happy that somebody reads my books. Because when you write a book, you have the impression that nobody will read it. So, at least there is one person that reads and just remember what I wrote. Better than me, because maybe I forgot it. But, uh, yes, uh, I will say in a very simple way, a little bit naive, uh, Francois Jegou and myself make a list uh, of uh, design guidelines to try to move from the original idea to something that could be more structured as a collaborative service. And um, I, th I, I don't remember exactly what they wrote, but I, I think that more or less is what I could say also today. Given that this is not uh, so obvious, it's not so diffuse, and uh, there is a lot to do. You ask, I have some good example. Yes, I have some good example, and it's a good example uh, could go from, now I use one example that is very well known, it is not designed in the tradition, the community garden in New York that started 40 years ago, so it's a very mature social innovation that have a good relationship with the institution because the city stabilized a kind of a collaborative service called uh, Green Thumb, 
that help community. And if you go there, you f find really flourishing community that are managing nowadays 400 uh, community gardens. So in that case, it's very interesting how the co-design happened because it was really a very complex process because at the beginning, they were squatting that places and the police arrived and they had fight in the streets and the beginning of the co-design process has been uh, squatting, so to be out of the law, police making uh, fights in the streets, but afterward, they have been uh, so clever to understand each other, to understand that uh, you cannot last in time if you don't have a set of rules that help you to resist, and uh, by on the side of the city that uh, uh, those people was doing a very good job by all the point of view, included the value of the real estate that maybe is also a problem by other point of view. Or I could, uh, but I will not because it could become too long, uh, it was something more designed, uh, they, I know well because it has been done by the group that I was uh, coordinating until a short time ago, that moved from the observation of the co-housing and uh, started to develop some collaborative service to help uh, the co-housing um, to make it simpler. And we arrived to have some good examples that worked very well. And afterward, they must have been an institution they call uh, Social Housing Foundation in, Ita in Italy, in Milano, but it's uh, uh, at the Italian scale. And the same group entered in this uh, foundation. And now, it's a, a, an incre for me, it's a really something I'm really proud because uh, the same group uh, uh, has been capable to create something that maybe you do so also. So not only to create the buildings, but to create the group that had to live in the building and how to manage and how to uh, use the common space and so on and so forth. And uh, they arrived to this, putting some element that tried to avoid the risk because the co-housing was typically a slippery position because the co-housing is good when the people are nice people. But if you have the group that say we go together to live together, we do everything together, the risk to close themselves and to move from co-housing to a gated village is very strong. It is happening. Therefore, the story that I not told because it was too long, but I simply sketched it, is that we try to avoid how the, the risk of the co-housing when it spread toward the kind of social housing that permit to met, put some rules that avoid that kind of, uh, avoid, I hope that they avoid, it seems that they avoid this kind of risk. And um, regarding the point, your point, of course, this, this is a very, very long story. The, the last issue that you said, so uh, you, you, you put three main problems, three main issue. One, that you think uh, that uh, the present uh, condition of design separate the, 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 the practical from the cultural side. Um, I disagree, so we disagree, this is good, so this is antagonistic. Probably this is too complicated now to go. I, I think that you cannot separate. <laughs> so if it is apparently separate, you have or something technical that reduces the culture to solutionism, or you have some uh, quasi-artistic way of doing design that forget the practical things. But even the quasi-artistic design, at the end, you have to do something practical, if not simply to make uh, a virtual uh, a model. So I think that as a human being, we cannot escape from uh, making something that has some com physical component, and this has a meaning, and vice versa. The other point was, uh, probably the most tough one, it was uh, what give us designer the right to interpret? Is correct? And this is really, but I could say, uh, when, when we have an artist, a good artist, and we say that he's in some way capable to interpret something you ask to the artist, what gives you the right to say that the world is like this? You simply recognize it, if it is real, a good artist. And uh, why it happened is a mystery. 
I think that design is also an art. It's just this same component. It's simply an art that at the end be materializing something that also works and that gives some result. But if it is capable to bring something that is an original interpretation of the reality, it's a result of an intuition. And if we exclude intuition from design, it's not design. It's engineering. It's another story. When we also, as academics, we have such a problem to make us recognize our scientific work, it's because our colleagues do not recognize that design is a third way of doing things in between the hard science and the human science. And if we are not capable to make understand that there is an, a, a way of doing that is legitimate and uh, that has at the core the intuition that cannot be explained, uh, we will never be able to explain why design exists. So I don't know if this was the answer, but this is the way in which I'm capable to give an answer now. I almost, almost don't want to ask a question after what you just said, because it feels very satisfying. <laughs> but I'm wondering whether between sense-making and activism, there is something else which is actually a very unpopular term at the moment, which is judgment. It's the judgment that Uber is flawed. It might be the judgment that our government's policy regarding migration is wrong. And it made me think of um, two things. One is, well, Immanuel Kant's three critiques, the critique of pure reason looked at rationality, the critique of practical reason looked at praxis and ethics, but he had to complete it with the critique of judgment. And in that critique is where he looks at beauty, as it turns out. But I also think this ties back to some of the discussion from Anders PhD yesterday, if he'll permit me mentioning it, where there was a question of what he contributed as a, as a designer. And I, my sense is what he contributed more than, in sense, skills, material skills, was actually his judgment. Mm -hmm. uh, there is somebody that wants to give a feedback to... <laughs> No, you, you want to? No, I, I can say something, but I will not to talk all the time. So. Well, I could... I, I, okay. Um, I'm very much on, on, uh, on, on your page. And, uh, and, and I think that when we t you talk about this expert design, I think it's, it's, it is a training, a long-term training in judgment. That's what it's all about, basically. Uh, uh, but it's judgment that is very m often done in a, in a material and an explicit way. Maybe not all, uh, so much in words all the time, but in, 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 in other formats. But it, it's a constant training in, uh, in, uh, in judgment. And uh, uh, philosophically, one could also one could also go all the way back to Aristotle, but remember that we've had the Third War, uh, the, the Second uh, World War. We have all these catastrophes. Uh, we've had modernism, uh, and uh, my definition—I know we kind of disagree <laughs> on this—but my, my definition of design, then, in that term of, of judgment, would be an anxious act of political love, uh, which would make judgment very central, but it's. It's also a question of being able to act in situations, whether it's, it's uh, uh, car sharing or it's uh, the whole changed uh, uh, map of not only Europe. Uh, so how and so what is the, can we live without uh, the activism in, in and, 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 and the passion in this? Can, can so I guess, could we, this discussion that we're having here, which I find very interesting and very informative, and, 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 and we learn a lot, but is it, what is it we are doing when we start with the issue that you bring up in the beginning, and we end up in the question of how do we define design? Uh, is it, 
Can you follow me? And I'm not saying that the last question is unimportant, but how can... Maybe it's just a question of our... Not at all design capabilities, but human capabilities. How can whatever profession, whether it's design or it's urban studies or, or, or whatever, how, how, how can we throw in here and now uh, what we hope we uh, uh, can contribute with, very well knowing as, uh, as um, uh, Maria points out that we, 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 we might have very little to have it in uh, what, what our, our, our specific contribution uh, could be. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, and I guess I, it's also asking out to to the uh, to the uh, to, to, to 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 all of us. Uh, how how can we design when everybody designs uh, without talking about what is actually happening here and now? Hmm. No. Yeah. Somebody else. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah, maybe a question for us all. But uh, y you mentioned the solutionism, right? So uh, we are. Where are you? Uh, here. Ah. <laughs> we are educated to find out the problem and solve it, or something like this, in in a certain way. In several schools, I I think I was educated like this at least. Um, and then you talk that that is not about finding solutions, but making sense. And then I think the Sorry, examples... I have not said that is not but. I said we have to find solution being conscious of the sense that we are making and having some capability to discuss and to have a conversation also on the sense making. It's not that we have not to do solutions. So it's we have to, as if you design a chair, the chair has to work. But okay. afterwards, it has also language. Okay. And then from, from the examples you gave... Uh, you, you said we, we were telling the stories and how we can tell a better story or something like this. And then I was thinking like, okay, if we don't make of everything a problem and we should tell a story, are we like designing for motivation and then that change is not more about the solution but how to motivate change? Is that what you meant? Uh, yeah, maybe this uh, I can answer because it could also connect uh, with what you and, and also something that I forgot you said before. Uh, first, I, I hope uh, I tell it, I retell it because I want to be sure that it's clear. I'm not saying that we are only working on the sense making. We are acting in the reality, changing something that is uh, physical, and uh, producing sense. And we should be capable to bridge these two dimensions. And uh, case by case, one of the two can be predominant. And also, not only in the phase of history, as I said before, there have been moments in which all the discussion about design was mainly about languages, and that's a moment in which about uh, functions, and so on, the pendulum. But also, of course, if you design a screw, uh, the issue about the uh, meaning uh, of the screw is not so much. It's, uh, as a matter of fact, it's uh, mostly an issue about engineers. And if you design a new chair or a new lamp, there is a lot of to do with meaning. So the two things are not separable. So for me, at least, this is the main point. But the second point is uh, you were saying, I forgot to, to mention, that uh, one of the missing points is we do not agree on the ethical issue at the basis. And afterward, you said uh, how we can judge. And I think that two things are linked, because to judge, you have to have some ethical value and vice versa. Well, uh, this is a discussion in which I dare to say something that maybe, uh, well, I'm discussing with you. So, But I think that uh, the good thing of a designer is that they are not philosopher. Even if you have uh, some designer as him that is so deep in philosophy, but you're not philosopher, you're a designer. And if you're a designer, you arrive to some solution without the need to be all agree in agreement about the judgment. 
This, in my view, is the real challenge. This is potentially the power of design, not me and you, but uh, the possibility of create a culture that uh, give an answer to the question, some orientation for people that not necessarily have been around the table and agree on the same thing. So if there have been hundreds of thousands of people that was moving, converging toward modernity, it's not said that all of them had, if they had to discuss about the value, the same ideas. But there has been something in the air that was showing a certain image, a certain way of doing, a certain language that was perceived as modernity. And this is, in my view, the way in which we designers are right. And one point that I forgot it brings to the judgment, in some way also, it's <coughs> we should have a culture. So I am not, maybe there were so many things that I said, maybe I got lost. I'm not thinking that we are alone facing the problem. We are in some way alone, and we have to be capable strategically to understand what are the possibility, but we should be feel to be part of a culture of the group that could be multiple, but it's a discussion that we have. And therefore, the possibility of judgment is a social construction. So we build the language and the criteria that permit to judge. And the way in which it happened is uh, in the School of Design, if you remember, and architecture, what was the normal way of making the studio? Everybody do something, and afterward we sit and we discuss together. The discussion together is the way to create the quality. Because you don't talk every time about uh, the principle, the ethical motivation. At the end, you say, now I banalize, I like it. It's functional and I like it. Maybe it could be a little bit like this. Why don't you put it a little bit like that? So this is the way in which designers discuss. And in this way, they create a common sense. Maybe wrong. For instance, they create a common sense of modernity, and this both adds to the consumption society that we know. So it's not guaranteed that it's good. But it's the only human way that we can have. So to consolidate the individual capability to take your responsibility, to make your choice, to explore your environment, and at the same time, to participate to the social conversation in between the designers. This is why I am so, <laughs> in some way, uh, maybe also exaggerating in the need to have environment, arena, in which who pretend to think to be designer talk with other people that are designers. Not because when you have the project, of course the project you have to do with others. But if you want to consolidate your capability to judge, you have to have a place, a moment in which you talk with similar to you, and you start to create the language, the criteria that permit to improve the possibility to afterward go in the complexity of the world and bring your position. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ezio, and I think this is about where we could end because we could uh, also agree on this on disagreeing yeah. uh, in the sense that uh, I, I liked very much what you said here in the end, but considering the architectural studio, there is very often a master designer, mm. the head architect, and everyone has to do what he or she thinks actually is, is the right thing. There's a lot of different ideas, but in the end it will be mm. what you or whoever uh, decide here. So, so the question is, could there be another model than the design studio? For instance, uh, a model... Yeah, no, there, are, there are other yeah, models. Yes, I, know, I, know, I want I only to say <laughs> that traditionally is the, through the conversation. Yes, but, but, but if you like uh, to conclude, <laughs> if you go in Nepal, you cannot find bad coffee. <laughs> everywhere there is good coffee. Yeah. Why everywhere there are good coffee? Yeah. Because people ask conversations on the coffee. Yeah. And so they know exactly the language, they know they have the perception of the differences. So if you do a bad coffee, you don't sell it. Yeah. So this is the way in which a group, no, I use the example of the studio, but it's a group that yes. start to, call, to talk and to have the conversation yeah. not only on the solutions, yeah. but also 
on the cultural dimension. Yeah, but I'm holding a mic so I can <laughs> allow myself still. <laughs> even if it's already. So, uh, so why, and, and this is the absolutely less philosophical uh, comment then, uh, why, why the, uh, the conversation where one uh, reaches, uh, reaches consensus, why not in the terms of, of, of Chantal Mouffe, something more, uh, uh, more of agonism, where we know that there is the the, uh, the strong uh, design hero in, in the studio, and uh, uh, we know that there are different uh, resources, different competences, uh, different way to get, uh, you want to and, and you meet, uh, and you acknowledge this, you want to move forward together, uh, but not in a consensus way, but understanding that we still have very different agendas. Because you are talking about the co-design. Yes. I talk in the antagonist <laughs> people that are there, to be antagonist, they have to have ideas. Yes. They have to have yes. values, and they have to have created their own groups in which they have created these values. Because otherwise, we imagine that the antagonism is simply in between individuals. Mm. The antagonism is in between ideas, vision of the world, that have to have, in turn, somebody that is similar. So it's not against the idea that mm. you have arena where you have antagonists, but to have antagonism, rich antagonism, it means the rich dialogue, each component has to bring something that is rich. And to be rich has to be more than what me individually can do. Has to be my personal opinion on the basis of a discussion that I have to somebody else. Ladies and gentlemen, an applaud to Professor Manzini. <laughs>